All right, so I just want to say uh, hello. I mean, you guys probably know that I'm a finesse boy, and I've been helping out uh, writing proposals mainly. Uh, and I'm also just trying to look for any contributors. So if you know anyone who is interested, just refer them to me or whatever, and just get them doing something if they're interested. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say, and I'm just going to pass it over to Alex. Okay, hey everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I uh, it's been a pretty exciting week. Uh, we got uh, we got invested in by uh, Robot Ventures, and then there was also that big punk sale. So that's uh, that's really awesome. It just seems like the hype around NFTs just keeps growing. Uh, I think it's like a sure thing at this point that 2021 NFTs will be front and center, which is awesome for us. Um, all right, let me see what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to try and speak less this meeting because I, I was watching a bit of the last one and I noticed that I kind of monopolized it all. Um, I've also told Finesse Boy that, you know, occasionally I need someone to like take my batteries out. So he's welcome to cut me off if that ever happens. Uh, so I pushed some front end updates last night. Apparently there was, uh, there's like some bugs. Um, I already fixed one of them. I just need to push it. That's my bad. I, uh, I should have been testing more. And um, I'm hoping to open source this week. Um, it won't take long. It's just I need to create a new repo because there were a couple of API keys that weren't hidden um, in some commits way back when. So I will do that. Um, I have a meeting on Thursday tomorrow with Owen and Avi about uh, trying to get MBA Top Shot over onto Ethereum. We'll be talking with Flo. Um, I also was speaking to somebody on Twitter, I think uh, Gianni. Um, hopefully I have that name right. But yeah, it sounds like you know NBA Top Shot will be coming to Ethereum pretty soon. Um, at least a, a, one person is working on that, and then hopefully we will be soon as well. So that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, I saw the NFTX gallery mockups for Figma. I've had nothing to do with this. It looks really good, uh, really, really sweet. And uh, yeah, so last thing I wanted to talk about just quickly was that I'm kind of personally like running a little behind schedule on some stuff. Um, and that's like an ongoing issue. So I'm just going to keep trying to kind of cut back on the amount of columns I'm doing and like my direct messages and stuff. Um, so if you ever find like you want to speak to me, but you're having a hard time reaching me, just ask Chop and like he can find a way for me to get in contact with you. Uh, Honestly, like I don't want to go on like a personal rant here, but um, for anyone that's interested, like one mistake I made as a founder, I was saying this to Chop earlier, is that like emotionally in my head, I had launch day set as like the end of the, the period of development. And of course, you know, things just get crazier after launch day. So I've been working on this for like four or five months and I, I can feel the burnout kind of creeping on. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but yeah, like I do need to just focus a little bit more on myself and getting some healthy habits back. Um, and then hopefully I can become more productive. So yeah, this, this next month, a lot of it will just be about uh, trying to set up uh, better work management so that we can all work together efficiently. And um, I'll also speak about that a little bit later. Um, I'm hoping we can switch, switch to Notion. And um, I yep. think that that's we, about we, it for me. Yeah, I was going to say, we can talk about Notion later. I'm going to cover that as well. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, and regarding burnout, I think, like, for your productivity, the best thing is to not necessarily take your time, but do things that you're comfortable with. There's no reason to do everything now and then not do anything in a week instead of just building on a consistent basis and never getting burnt out if you're actually interested, which I definitely think you are. So, yeah. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts on just the opening? Uh, not really. I'm interested in uh, like the flow talks that will uh, commence tomorrow, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think we can probably talk about those uh, more in the next governance call, yeah. unless you have any like points to raise that you think we should talk about. But yeah, I definitely th think that we should bring top shots to Ethereum and not the other way around. Cause I think some people were talking uh, in the channel about something that would help top shot more than help us. So I think that should definitely be considered in the talks. Yeah. 
how late is that call? Is it already scheduled? Yeah, it's 12 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. 12 p.m. Okay, cool. Uh, just invite me to if you uh, if you have room. Yeah, I'll I'll send you. Um, just DM me on Discord the email you want to use, yeah. and I'll I'll send the calendar invite over. Okay. Yes. Cool. Uh, all right. Um, so we've officially hired uh, Chop Chop as part of the core team. I want to congratulate him, and if anyone else does, this is the time. I don't think anyone has any issues with this uh, proposal because it passed with 100%. So, yeah, I think we can just say congrats and keep on building Chop. We oui, thanks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Chop, now's your turn to talk about the weekend review. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't know how many of you saw the Weekend Review uh, se a second edition. So there's uh, a lot of topics in there, uh, which basically it looks back on the previous week uh, to give everybody that's not as involved as we are uh, a rough like overview of what's happening uh, with NFTX, the broader ecosystem, so also outside of uh, what we do. Um, so yeah, definitely take a look at the blog post if you haven't yet. Uh, would it make sense to list all the things that we spoke about? Uh, I don't know, like maybe. Uh, so essentially uh, what the last week in review covers, uh, and by the way, thanks Javery and uh, Eddie to contributing. Uh, it's uh, mainly so the first governance call. So we did that, the recording is on YouTube uh, and we'll do that with this one too. Uh, so anybody that can't attend the actual call uh, still has a chance to uh, get the full context of what we spoke about. Uh, then two other big topics that happened uh, were the punk fund, uh, both the liquidity switching over to Sushi uh, and CoinGecko because of that listing us. Uh, so the fund got a lot of traction and uh, some people from Sushi Schwab, so uh, Maki and Jero uh, were their core team members, uh, like the founder, uh, tweeted about us, which kind of made the price of the bank fund go crazy. Uh, so it, it went times five of the actual underlying value of the index, uh, which got arb arbitrast quite quickly uh, and also showed how important it is for Alex to fix the front end. Uh, so people can actually create additional like punk tokens and uh, keep the price in line. Uh, so that was fixed too. That's also part of the uh, weekly roundup is that minting the two tokens uh, before there was a bug uh, or like uh, an intentional thing in the contract, which caused people to not be able to mint any punk if it wasn't one uh, or up or higher. Uh, which is a lot of money for a lot of people. So uh, it basically rendered out a lot of people to ARP that, uh, but that got fixed. Uh, well, then there's the point of me uh, maybe getting hired. Uh, I am hired now, <laughs> awkward. Um, yeah, so, so uh, roadmap updates. So uh, all the stuff that uh, Alex is working on, which he just said, um, redeeming, the NFTs uh, from the D1 fund. Um, there are some talks about that um, on like low liquidity, essentially, or uh, like funds with uh, little NFT collateral being an issue uh, or like a, a problem. And uh, Alex quoted a bit on that on the, and the, the, the next steps to, to do that. Uh, then there's the price check, which everybody knows, I think, uh, top shots, which we covered. And then the last point is two tutorials, which uh, Eddie and Javery wrote, which really goes into helping out uh, very newcomers to the crypto scene uh, who don't really know how to uh, use Uniswap, how to set up uh, a wallet and get their Coinbase funds uh, like uh, yeah, Coinbase funds onto an actual wallet that they can purchase NFTX with. One thing I'd like to say is it's not necessarily new crypto users, but it could be Bitcoin users. Or Bitcoin. Like, yeah, yeah. 
new DeFi users better, maybe. If that isn't uh, like a shot at Bitcoin. Um, and then the last one is uh, MetaMask. So MetaMask doesn't automatically show an FTX. Uh, Yo, Hartwood. Uh, doesn't show MetaMask uh, NFTX, so it's a uh, it's a, a guide how to actually add that token, so you can see you have your tokens in your wallet. I think that's pretty much it for the weekend review. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next part we'll be talking about uh, active proposals that are on the forum or maybe on Discord, but pretty much everything we've talked about on Discord is also on the forum. So uh, I posted a proposal today regarding a governance framework and process. So um, if you guys have any thoughts, this would be a good time to talk about it. But yeah, basically I made a draft proposal and uh, let it sit there for quite some time, have people talk about what they think. Um, if they had any criticisms, I basically used whatever input I could and uh, did my research on my end from other DAOs and other proposals that I've seen and things based on like what I believe or what I saw was efficient. And uh, yeah, that's how I would implement it. And today I published the final proposal. So that's how I would post it to Snapshot if uh, like form, form is reached and all of that is explained in the post. So it would basically define how we go through governance decisions. So it's not like on a case by case basis, like we have a predefined framework. So we're just more efficient by not hesitating for things or just knowing how things get done. And people can also start doing things and not hesitate because they know things can get pushed regardless if they follow the correct framework. Uh, then Owen is also here. So uh, he can talk about his proposal uh, regarding the X token deployment. And I'm also working on proposals with him for gas reimbursements uh, and grants because he's been the person who's building the most uh, in regards to like gas consumption. So yeah, I can let him speak on that. <laughs> do we want to go into those topics just like right now uh you can talk a, a little bit about the uh token deployment but it's more to give a general overview and then have people if they have uh, any thoughts or questions they talk about it now and then like we can have more serious discussion on the forum okay yeah, yeah. so the short setup is the way that people currently deploy d1 funds um, has them deploying like an entirely new token contract through the front end. Um, so this is pretty gas costly. And because all of the X tokens have the same functionality, um, we can actually make use of a different deployment method. So we can uh, use this minimal proxy pattern. The idea being that we have sort of one token contract that handles logic and everybody else just creates a new contract that only handles the storage for like the name and the symbol. Um, so I set up an MVP of that, um, and it's it's out uh, like on GitHub with tests. It's running on Rinkby for people to play around with, um, with the hope being that once we get more eyes on it, if everyone's uh, like on board, we can move this into the new front end flow. Um, and in my testing, it cuts the gas deployment for like the initial token in about half, which is pretty great. So it goes from like eighty dollars in ether to like forty dollars. Uh, that's like the, the short gist of it, yeah. And uh, like when you did that, what did you feel, like how did you feel incentivized? What would you have wanted different? Oh, you know? uh, well, I also did it because uh, I think it like, it patches the thing that I've been talking with Alex about um, in a way that like the NFTX master contract uh, has this uh, like potential issue where like you might have people like create unorthodox unauthorized type tokens. Um, so like the factory also helps deal with that. Uh, but I, I guess if there was like a more explicit uh, like set of boundaries or something, I might have been like, oh, well, now I know how to better scope my project. Uh, well, what, what, I, what I was going to say, uh, I'll let Alex speak in a minute, but what I was going to say is, so I think the reason you did it is because like you want to build and it interested you. So that's why I think retroactive bounties are the best way of moving forward, because that way you can check for what people have done. And if people build things of value and like you've checked it, then they just get something that is of value returned to them. So yeah, I'll let you speak now, Alex. Um, yeah, so I was just gonna echo that basically and say that we don't really have any rewards set up for um, like community developers yet. 
but I think it, it gives people an opportunity to kind of stand out and show that they're passionate about this. Um, for example, you know, the fact that Owen's working on this and he hasn't gotten paid yet, um, that helps, you know, kind of signal that Owen's a real strong community member and is committed to the project, um, which can be a good thing for us, just getting to know people in the community. But I do think in the future, it would be really good if we could have some sort of retroactive rewards. I mean, I, I personally would also be in favor of, of hiring a developer, but I know that a lot of people aren't that keen on that, so that's totally fine. I think we should do you know, whatever our community developers prefer um, then we can try and reward them that way. And yeah, lastly, I just want to yeah, reiterate that it's, it's really awesome that people are already digging into the solidity. I, I've kind of felt bad because I didn't have much time to like dedicate to helping Owen with any of this. Like he just did it all himself. So that that's really great. And um, I hope to see more of that. Yep, exactly. That's why I think building a framework to have people like other people like Owen come forward and know Knowing things are transparent is just, I think that's a great way for us to move forward. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it regarding uh, gas reimbursements and grants. Uh, so Alex wanted us to move to Notion. Um, I think that's fine with me. There's not really much difference. So it's, does anyone disagree with that? No, I like Notion a lot too. Uh, basically, compared to Asana, uh, which we use right now for a lot of project management, Notion is super nice because you, because you can make pages public. Uh, so we can actually show uh, publicly what we're building on if we wanted to. Uh, plus, it's also a substitute sometimes for uh, like having actual content on. So, uh, for instance, a brand guide could be also hosted on Notion, uh, and it can't be on Asana. So I think, like from from that perspective, uh, it's great. I don't know if it's uh, if it's great for development uh, because I'm not a developer, but uh, I'll let you decide. I, I was gonna say Alex is the developer and he's yeah. the one recommending it, so I think that's that's all good. Nice. Uh, so. Next snapshot proposals, there's nothing current. Um, the only thing is I'd like to push the governance uh, framework and process proposal relatively quickly because uh, the draft has been up for a long time. I just want as much input as I can have because it's more of a long-term decision making choice, uh, even though like you can always change past proposals for many things. And this we've talked about before. We also talked about it in the last governance call like if you make a proposal that passes uh, and you make a future proposal, the future proposal will always supersede the past one unless it's something that is not changeable, like if burning keys or whatever. I mean, you could always mint on or migrate, but yeah, that's, that's it becomes much more complicated. But yeah, future proposals should always supersede past proposals. So yeah, does anyone have any uh, proposal ideas or farming ideas? Uh, I'll let uh, AK go first. Hey, um, no, <clears throat> I've already posted on the forum. It's just about it's one of the side projects of Alex's. Um, it's about the collaboration with Artblocks and sort of having an, a drop. And it's it's not a proposal yet, but I just plugged it in on the forum as a discussion and wanted to know a bit more about what other people are thinking and maybe just yeah get some discussion going on that aspect. <clears throat> Uh, Alex, do you have any thoughts on that as well? I think you had answered uh, on the forum. For yeah, that. no, I was I was actually going to mention that. Um, so I think the Art Blocks project it has a lot of potential. Uh, like I, I mentioned in the last meeting, and I'm sure many of you have seen like this side projects page that um, I was kind of organizing in Notion. So I changed that to call the like assignments now. Um, basically, I think I'm just going to try and lump uh, core tasks in there as well uh, but yeah one of the one of the projects or assignments is the art blocks project and I, I just think art blocks is like a really cool platform um, it's it's like gotten a lot of traction it's, uh, it's a great idea and it would be really cool if we can build something on there so yeah if anyone wants to help out with that 
like it's it's not an urgent project, but I think it could be a lot of fun, um, and it, it could be for fun for all the people involved. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna check into art blocks more. But uh, regarding farming, uh, so AKI. I think all the options you offered were good. Um, just for the third option, I just think I'm not sure if we would want to use an artist NFT or not. I mean, it can be good, but would it not be better to use uh, like liquidity that we already hold? Yeah, that's just my, my opinion on that. But yeah, it's, it's really nice that you opened up discussion on farming because there wasn't anything else yet on the forum. Yeah, I mean, it was just an option it, <clears throat> off the top of my head. And um, and also, there was sort of, um, you know, there, there has been interest shown from Snowfro from Artblocks, and he's already spoken to a few artists there. Um, so I spoke to a few artists as a result of that and then figured out that they, they kind of prefer our rebranding to be done before. Um, for the f option one and option two, um, or any other option, they were just options and like nothing concrete. Yeah, I think we we all agree that rebrand is a priority before farming. I mean, yeah. or not all agree, but most people agree on this. So yeah, and uh, what I was gonna say is, uh, Javery had the idea of using artists for commissioned drops, with uh, like the weekend review, similar to what uh, Red Lion Gazette does. So I think that would also be really interesting if you know any artists that are interested in helping out. That could be one thing that they could also do. So yeah. Uh, I also made a comment on that uh, on that part is that uh, I think Javier is already asking, but I uh, made a comment that it might be good for us, so the DAO to uh, essentially start off that initiative by commissioning uh, artists to do art. So like reaching out proactively and ask them like, yo, can you make four NFT drops for the next month uh, uh, in relation to our weekly? Um, and then basically recoup the cost uh, for the DAO by selling them uh, at the cost basis of the commission. Um, because we can't really ask artists to just make art and we use it and uh, that's it, you know? I, I, I was, I completely agree. I meant more as in like get into conversation, not yeah, as yeah, in yeah, start sure. working, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, like if there's one thing we don't want to do, it's uh, like extorting artists just because we have a name now. Uh, it needs to be fair for both. I would say fair for all three, yeah. the artists, the DAO, and also the users. Yep. So uh, Alex, uh, here, I'm going to ask you about uh, the next D2 funds. What's the progress on that? Yeah, um, good question. Um, so basically, uh, besides this bug that popped up this morning, which I'm pretty confident um, will be taken care of uh, within an hour or two, uh, the, the D2 funds are, are ready to mint and redeem from the front end. It's, it's, e it's pretty easy to do. We don't have any like uh, tutorial yet, so we might want to put something together like that. But I guess now is, the question is, what do we want to do moving forward? Um, on one hand, we can focus on punk. We can try and get some volume going on it um, and some more action, try and add liquidity. Um, or we can just keep on rolling out the other pools. Um, I, yeah, does anyone have any thoughts on that? Uh, Bobby, you can go ahead. Hey, um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, when you say roll out the other funds, is we're just doing one by one, or do you want it like, all at once? I think we should probably focus on rolling out the other funds, whether it be all at once or one by one, because that was why we raised them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then um, the liquidity will come with the farming. I think if we just, because I, I understand that a lot of people are there for punks, but some people are there for the other stuff. So it lets them uh, be able to trade in and out, et cetera. 
So what, what I was going to say is I 100% agree with you there. I think the only reason Alex was saying this is because of like taking it slow and making sure things are done right. But I do agree with you. To me, the most important thing right now is releasing all D2s. I think we should go one by one, but I think releasing all D2s is definitely the number one priority, like since the front end is fixed, let's say. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything else to say? Uh, uh, yeah, regarding that, I guess, does the ordering matter that much? Or uh, I started working on the Axie, like write up and stuff, but we can, because I think the ones with more might be more difficult so we do those first like like so punks had five of them and then i think axis had three avastars had two tree i don't know about so, the specific tree also order. yeah so i think we should go with axi based on popularity but uh chop had thoughts on that but i'm gonna let uh, ak speak and then uh, i'll let you speak chop cool yeah I, i'm actually on the other side of that that coin where i think that we should get done properly with Punk first. There are a lot of issues like in the front end that we need to kind of, um, like I, 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 for the past, since Punk has, D2 is launched, I've been trying to like sort of arp it and see all the ways we've been trying to do it. Um, there is a lot of sort of, you know, lack of information, lack of guides, and even the front end of Punk. I think if we get that done as like sort of the MVP or sort of the prototype, and we get that right, like fixed, then we can, then it's, I think it's easier for us to copy paste it to the other sort of funds. Uh, but if we try to roll out everything and then end up having not not done even one of them well enough uh, and just spreading liquidity all over, it would just kind of end up being like, you know, then we're rushing into farming and then, and then things are just going haywire. Yeah, so when I meant that it's my priority, I don't mean sacrificing quality. Like as we've done right now, we haven't launched these funds, so launched these funds. Uh, so I, I wouldn't want to do that without having finished the, the like opening stuff that is necessary for it to actually work. Uh, and like based on what Alex pushed today and will keep pushing, I think today, like if the front end is fixed, then that's already one of the major issues uh, that is required for the other funds. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Alex talk more about that. Um, yeah, so one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I won't try and bring it up on my screen right now, but if you guys go to like nftx.org, you'll see that the homepage has changed a bit slightly. Um, so I added a couple filters at the top. Like UI, it, it, it definitely needs some work, but um, I do think it's an improvement. Anyway, the, the point I wanna make is that there's now uh, three like check boxes um, the first one is, let me look. The first one is if it's finalized. Um, so basically that just means if like the creator of the fund still has management privileges. Second one, I'm say, calling it like verified. And that means that like we've taken a look at the contract. It's not gonna exploit you in some way. Uh, hopefully that this, this verified thing becomes redundant if people use Owen's uh, new factory method. And then also the third one is AMM. Um, so like right now, the idea is if there's a checkbox under AMM that tells users that, hey, this, this token is tradable, um, like swappable via an AMM somewhere in DeFi. But okay, so one thing when I was making this, like basically I want people to come to the homepage, look at the funds and say like, oh, I like this fund, but I see it's not swappable yet. So like we want to get to the point where all of these funds are swappable. The problem is... Uh, like what defines swappable, like what defines liquid? Uh, for, for example, if like we have a new fund on there, the variant Davis fund, which is like uh, an art blocks fund. It's the first one. It's kind of experimental. I, I think like uh, Jesse's thinking about creating an AMM, but it might only have like literally a few hundred dollars worth of liquidity. So do we, do we put a check under that and say liquid? Like, I, I don't know. Um, I think, I think the part of the problem is we don't want to signal to people that a fund is liquid and then they buy a large amount and they've actually gotten hit with slippage. So one thing I know I, I've mentioned before is this idea of an aggregator. Um, I think it's really important that we start thinking about building our own trade aggregator. Uh, I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to cut you off there though, Alex. Okay. okay, okay. 
because <laughs> we, we've talked about the aggregated before and I, I i think that's just too long view for now right now but yeah chav did you have any more thoughts yeah yeah um so for me uh, from the launching D2 part, so going back to that uh, topic, uh, I think it's we can't launch any other funds until uh, both the front end works for arbitrage, uh, which it doesn't really yet uh, because the D1, D2 is disabled, uh, I think, at the moment, right, from the front end. Uh, and there's also some visual bugs uh, causing people to just uh, essentially time out on the front end. Um, plus tutorials. So in line with the front end fixes, uh, we have to create tutorials, which is on my to do essentially as, as soon as the uh, front end is done or workable uh, for arbitrage and people don't have to uh, flock to Etherscan anymore to, uh, to do stuff. Um, then I'm looking to, I think, creating five or six guides, essentially uh, going step by step on how to uh, uh, for instance, acquire an NFT on OpenSea or Rarible, use that to uh, mint a D1 token. What can you do with the D1 token? Uh, uh, you can provide liquidity, uh, you can sell it into a pool, stuff like that. All has to be crystal clear before we launch any other additional fund, in my opinion, uh, because otherwise we'll get the same problems that we had with the bank uh, launch, which is essentially people knowing that they can ARP, but they don't know how to, or it's bugs, uh, which sucks for people. It, it kind of creates an unfair advantage for the people that do know how to operate uh, using Etherscan versus people that just know how to use the front end, which is kind of uh, not what we want, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I, I view the arbitrage as the minimum vi viable product. If you can trade every single fund into another one and complete the ARB opportunity, then you're using the product. If you can't complete that ARB opportunity, then yeah. Punk is not even correctly launched yet. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, that's what I mean when I mean launching. And from the from the like uh, all in one go or uh, rolled out, I personally prefer rolling out launch uh, on a like maybe three day basis or even week basis uh, because of the hype you can create for each individual community. Uh, so Axie, for uh, for example, has a major community uh, that we want to focus on uh, when we launch the D2 fund for Axie. And we can't really focus if we launch five, uh, like five NFT funds at the same time. Um, so I think that's from a like promotional uh, aspect, the best way to go, unless we uh, uh, run into problems later by doing that. For instance, the farming stuff, like if that gets delayed because of this uh, launch schedule, I can also live with shortening, shortening it a little, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Uh, I'll, I'll let uh, AK speak and then I'll give it back to Chop uh, so he can talk about the upcoming media and marketing. Yeah, I'm just going to be quick. Yeah, I, like I agree with Chop there. Uh, the idea of, uh, you know, having all that set up. But also while I was sort of playing around with the stuff that's already done, um, you know, because and also the light paper is stating that our priority is the end investors who are getting exposure. I think the backward, uh, like, so it's easy to, it was not easy, but it was, you could still get into the fund by minting punk, but it was harder for a person who's trying to buy punk and then come out with, uh, with the NFT. Um, also, so those, I mean, for many reasons, one being like, I can't pick the punk, which I'm getting out, out of the subgroup of say punk basic. Um, so that was like a deterrent, deterrent for me to like play, like reduce, you know, the price action that was going up and then actually take out a punk and go and list it on Lava Labs perhaps. So I think all of those, once that coming back out of the fund is also enabled in, the, in like the most easiest front end manner. Uh, then both ways can balance each other out. And then it's just easy for us to plug it into more T2 funds. Yep, I think just to, to echo this before I pass it to Chubb, we, we all agree that what we mean as a, a launched fund is basically going in both directions without any hiccups. Like you can 
e even more than the direction. Like if you see it as a ladder, you can go from like punk basic to punk a attribute four, four or whatever. Like with doing that only via the front end without any hiccups. I think that's the goal that we should have. And then for yeah. every fund, that should also be the goal. Can I, can I still ask some uh, one thing about uh, about the funding stuff? Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, so before we move the uh, the needle towards other categories of uh, D two and D one funds like XE, uh, I remember that we also thought about rebalancing the balancer pool essentially. So right now uh, the punk balancer pools are essentially there's five different pools which is D one. Uh, uh, paired with Eve, and then there's one smart pool, which is the D2 uh, like punk core pool, which only has the D1 tokens. Um, and I remember Alex, we talked about uh, essentially removing all the D1 Eve pairs and just making one smart pool, which has uh, all the D1 and Eve uh, in one like smart pool, because that's probably cuts down a lot of uh, gas costs too. And I, I guess also slippage, probably. Um, yeah, I can I can touch on that really quick. I'll, I'll try and be quick about it. Yeah. Um, is that um, yeah? So basically, the idea is right now the, the punk token. It's a balancer pool, um, mm -hmm. and it combines five different D one punk funds. Um, so one of the cool things about balancer pools is that any trading volume that goes through those sub funds on balancer that gets collected by the punk token holders. Uh, so we figure that like, okay, so with the, with the punk token, it's possible to trade punk basic against punk female, but there's no way to really trade them against E. Um, you'd have to have a separate, separate pool for E. So the idea is that, Hey, why don't we just add like a small amount of E to the punk token? then that collects fees on any D1 punk funds that are getting traded against ETH as well. So for example, if someone wanted to sell a punk female into ETH, then the punk token holders would actually collect some fees on that. Uh, the downside is that the smallest amount you can add is 4%. Um, and it does open up the potential for some impermanent loss if punk were to go up much, much higher than ETH. Uh, but I, I do think that the yeah it has a lot of upside because there could be more um, fees earned by punk token holders. Uh, Bobby, you can go ahead, but we have to keep it short because Chop has to talk. Uh, when you say the minimum is four percent, how do the ninety-eight two things work then? Um, okay, so yeah, you can actually do 2%. It, the minimum is 4% if you want to use a smart pool and if you want it to be adjustable moving forward. Um, okay. So I set it up as a smart pool, but yeah, we could technically do like create a static token that we can't change and then we could do just 2%. Okay, yeah, I'm not that familiar with the smart pool thing. I'll take another look. I mean, it seems like a fun idea. Sorry, I was uh, responding to state, so we actually didn't cover this because no one uh, pushed it to the agenda. But uh, so I'll, I'll cover this uh, later. I just want you guys to think about it for a second, if you can, of uh, how we can acquire uh, more ether to the treasury to launch the other funds. But yeah, just think of that for a second while uh, Chop shows you our next rebrand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me do this right. Uh, from so. Let me know whenever you see my screen. So, so it's good now. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know how clear you can see my screen. Uh, the, 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 the quality is good, just the FPS is really low. Okay, uh, sorry then. Uh, so basically, uh, some, some of you might have already seen this. It's a Miro board that Finesse and I worked on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, when we uh, realized that the logo that we used wasn't really sustainable because we didn't have license uh, on it. So we couldn't keep the like original X logo uh, that we used. So for now, we switched to a uh, in-between uh, X. Uh, so it's just a, like a clean white X. Uh, but regardless, we're going to rebrand. Uh, and we made a mood board based on all the things that already 
already happened within the DAO uh, and the things we like and liked about the old brand uh, to give as inspiration to the uh, designer that I'm going to work with next week, um, uh, which is Ben Purat. Uh, I have my whole next week kind of booked uh, to work together with him. Uh, explain him this mood board and also like the broader scope of what NFTX is. Uh, and then we'll come out from that with a new brand. So I'm just going to uh, go through this mood board uh, quickly, uh, showing what we thought of uh, would be cool to get as inspiration for the next brand. Uh, if you have any comments on this uh, right now or after the call, uh, please drop them to me or uh, anyone else, uh, because it's valuable that we create this brand together. Uh, so that's it. Um, so for the colors we like, essentially right now in the briefing, I uh, use the original uh, three colors from the logo and expanded that with uh, darker and wider colors, uh, which uh, work together well. Uh, so that's essentially the things we like uh, because we picked the or original brand with that. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the actual color template that we end up with uh, will be the same. Uh, it's just as inspiration. Um, so then we have the emoji slash mascots. Uh, so one thing uh, that we did very early with the DAO is uh, vote on a, mo a mascot like emoji, which could turn into a mascot uh with a lot of people voting on the uh orangutan essentially on the emoji uh and on this whole thing so it's a whole emoji uh, which kind of resonated with us uh because the light paper speaks about nftx being the uh liquidity black hole for nfts uh so this whole mood board is kind of backed or based on that uh thought process uh, also, some more context around the orangutan and the hole is it kind of, uh, of course, the ape meme from DeFi uh, is included, uh, but it resonated a lot because it has similarities to Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so it's essentially the ape Alice uh, getting lost in the world of NFTs. So it's a crossover between DeFi and NFT, the DeFi and NFT scene. Uh, which is kind of a deep rabbit hole. Uh, so that's the underlying thinking of that. Uh, so I hope we end up with a lot of mascots to create memes around. Uh, then the logo. So the logo uh, is very uh, based on this like vortex black hole style thinking. Uh, it's very uh, like a lot of line art uh, with uh, colors that resonate with the color template above. These are just like things I think are recognizable from uh, like big logos, but also if you use them as icons. So if you zoom out a lot, uh, you can still recognize the um, pattern to be uh, like associated with NFTX. Um, so that's the logo set. Then illustrations, that's the largest amount of input. Uh, it's all very uh, colorful and very uh, like galactic black hole-ish inspired. Um, so really, like if you if you are interested in this kind of stuff, have a look. Uh, just a collection of what we feel makes sense to uh, rebrand NFTX into. It's very um, uh, illustrative. So uh, because we're in the NFT space and we have to speak like our main audience is our investors that believe in investing in uh, NFT art or collectibles. Uh, it's kind of mandatory, in my opinion, to have uh, like a really visual appealing brand rather than uh, too abstract, uh, which doesn't resonate with uh, like people that want or want to feel that they invest in the NFT space. Um, also, again, very based on the uh, black hole team. Uh, so yeah, so that's that. Uh, then this is just uh, for the artists to understand what an NFT actually looks like. So that's just uh, get there, uh, which I give context on when I'm actually in the workshops. Uh, so that's the artwork. And then what's left is the uh, typefaces and icons. 
So the type, for the type cases, it's uh, really um, uh, like, uh, yeah, we call it uh, abstract, I guess. Uh, so it's a uh, sharp type, it's uh, readable. Um, and this in familiar, I, uh, it's, there's no context right now, but this uh, showcases that, um, that the, the type phase we want to use has to be or it has to show motion or uh, be able to show motion. Um, so that's something I'll brief to the artist that uh, uh, that's probably something that we want. And then the icons, that's the least amount of input. Uh, it's just the two icons that I quickly designed to have something uh, and some other icons that uh, Alex, I think, put in. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, I'll, I'll post a link uh, to this again uh, after the call, maybe in the agenda, uh, just so people can like discover in their own time and zoom in a bit more uh, with better FPS. Uh, so that's it from my side. Uh, if you have like input or thoughts or uh, whatever, please do tell uh, because I want to kind of lock this mood board. Uh, uh, at the end of today or end of tomorrow, uh, just so we don't do anything crazy with it just before we start this process. Uh, so if you feel uh, you have input, let me know. And that's it. Uh, Neuromancer, are you here? Yep, so yeah, uh, I'm, here. I'm here, sorry. I'm gonna transition to Neuromancer because it's also on the visual identity. Uh, so yeah, if anyone has any input uh, regarding the mood board, just talk to Chop. He's, that's his department now. <laughs> so yeah, Neuromancer, you can talk about what you've been building recently? Yeah, a couple of us in the, the community have been building the gallery for... Uh, m basically, it's just the D1 funds that we have up right now. And we're working on kind of a homepage that shows all of them. And then these detail pages that have all of the NFTs for a D1 fund. And we are just pushing to get something actually up by this meeting. We have something up on Net Netlify uh, where you can just see all the D1 funds, except the uh, gallery page is still in the works. Yeah. If, if anyone would like that link, you can just uh, DM me or Neuromancer. Yeah. And I think it's also uh, in the Discord. And uh, I think moving forward, I mean, we're really just at like the first little stage of this. We started on like Monday or something. Um, so we're like still at like, yeah, we're not even at really a full MVP yet. But so we'll take a lot of uh, contribution about like where we should go from here. Um, but people can start kind of playing around with it, I think. Yep. And just want to say it's really nice. So it's congratulations to all you guys. You've been building for like two or three days now. It's really nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, everyone really coalesced over this. It was, it was cool. Yeah, it, to see people from different time zones just hand off the baton when they go to sleep is nice to see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, the person I've been working with most is the quag. And yeah, we just we're on reverse time zone, so it's perfect. I I go to bed and like tell them what what to do next. It's it's cool. So uh, if anyone wants to look into the Netlify, just do that and just send any ideas over to uh, either Quag or Neuromancer. And uh, also now this is the part where we can just discuss whatever you guys have as concerns and stuff. So I'd like to talk about uh, farming the front end. So that's the gallery, obviously, I think should be a main part of that later on. And like what products we want to build uh, so I'm going to let State talk here initially, because he wants to talk about one of the products we currently have. So yeah. Hey, how's my audio? Is it, is it good? Yeah. Yep. OK, perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I wanted to talk about um, the amount of ETH in the Treasury, because we're, we're about to launch a bunch of new funds. And also discussing increasing the liquidity for Punk Basic, and we're probably going to need a little bit more ETH, I think. So um, I'm wondering 
like what people think about the different options to increase the amount of ETH we have so that we can launch more funds. So one, one option is um, taking some ETH, uh, taking a little bit of ETH from the NFTX ETH pair. I'm not sure what people think about that. Just want to just wanna ask your opinions. Uh, Yoni, you can go ahead. Yeah, Yoni, are you there? Oh, sorry, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, no problem. <laughs> actually, I wanted to, to, to comment on another topic, but um, I guess let's first speak about what state uh, state topic. And then... Yeah, so I, I think we can reduce NFTX uh, ETH. It just depends by how much. And uh, I think whoever can just push a, a proposal to discourse and we can talk about the numbers. Does anyone else have any thought on uh, reducing NFTX ETH? Um, I, I have a, a really quick thought. I, I'm kind of new to this whole thing, um, like big deals, but I know that like Robot Ventures, um, it was important to them that they had like an OTC deal. Um, in my opinion, those types of investors are probably the most important for us getting a hold of because they add a lot of value. Uh, so maybe somebody has thoughts on if we reduce the AMM liquidity, there's still a way that we could keep OTC um, so, available. Just a thought. Oh, I actually talked about this with uh, Chop the other day. So what we've never seen in the crypto space is uh, like a fair launch and then selling to VCs. So like you could think of it as a series B. So like we had the community raise, so people got in fair. And then, well, people are interested, but there's no other way to do it. So you can just sell OTC to VCs and they get in at a much higher rate. And we don't really dilute anything because they actually, or we should vet it obviously, but they add value. And yeah, definitely have a proposal for each OTC. That's, that's something I would say because you would be selling it straight from the Dow funds. And another option that it opens up is vesting. Um, like personally, I'm actually more in favor of selling for cheaper and getting people vested if we think that they can add value. Uh, so yeah, that's just another thing that we can keep in mind. Yeah, I, I think that depends just more on a case by case basis. Not everyone would add the same value and not everyone would want the same vesting time. And they would also not all propose at the same time. So those values would all change on a on a time basis but yeah i have an idea that 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 maybe can work um i mean people on on open sea have a, a lot of collections um uh, like bunch of things and then um, and uh, maybe nftx can do like an auction between all of those uh, collectors uh for who is going to sell who is going to sell his uh his uh is is collection as as ERC twenty tokens, and uh, in order to participate in this auction, they they should pledge like an ETH or uh, half of ETH or something like that. Um, you know the same thing as Whale uh, did with his uh, collection. So I guess there is others that want to that want to do it. So maybe that's another way to make the pot bigger. Yeah. Plus, don't forget. Uh onsen so over time uh the dow is the biggest liquidity provider so the the flip side of uh, or flip side of the coin of removing liquidity from the nft nftx pair is that we will get less uh um, revenue less, less sushi. revenue yeah uh so because we uh yeah we're a, a smaller liquidity provider so i guess it's a uh, it's kind of a two-way treasury manager to make a good uh, call on this. Yeah, it, you would basically have to do like a comparison of what can add mm -hmm. more value, the revenue from Onsen or building more. I think building more would add more value, but that's what I was mentioning when I said like, how much should we remove? Like is 10 ether enough to build? Is a thousand ether enough to build? So yeah. that's... Bobby, you can go ahead. What do we do with the sushi that we get right now? I know one third we get, and then two thirds is vesting. Um, uh, we don't, we don't do anything with it right now. 
should we do something with it? We should probably stake it and turn it into yeah, at least stake it, right? Yeah. Yep. I completely agree, but this is something like that has to be decided. But yeah, I think treasury management and like I, I've talked about this uh, with Alex, I think active treasury management is really important. And this would be those type of decisions. Like, should we keep 100% of the sushi we get and then put it in X sushi? Should we sell half, et cetera, et cetera? It's, but yeah, should valid points to raise. Now and then decide, I mean, there's no reason not to stake, right? Yeah, we might as, we might as well stake it. Um, so I I can do that from the DAO account. Um, I guess it's just a matter of like we have to keep staking every time we get new sushi. Yeah. Right? So maybe maybe we just do it like once a week or something. So that's the that's why I don't think we should stake yet. We should decide like should, do we want to stake every week, every two days, every quarter, or whatever. I mean, I think yeah, yeah. It's basically, more important getting the decision process. Basically, down. look look at the the minimum amount of gas it's or maximum amount of gas it's going to cost, and what's the minimum amount of sushi to input for it to be worthwhile, and that's whenever we should input whenever we have that amount of sushi. Just ignore everything else. Yeah, I agree. There's there's no there's no rush for us to stake. Um, like it, it is free money, but. Uh, it's important that we get the decision process down as well. So we can probably like make a post about that and decide exactly what we want to do. Yep. Uh, State, you can go ahead. Um, yeah, so I guess what I would uh, propose for removing the ETH from NFTX ETH would be like, yeah, really a small amount, just just enough for having enough ETH for launching the next funds. And uh, maybe uh, just a 200 ETH or maybe something like that. So not, not anything that would have a major impact, but uh, it's it's a good question. Should we remove enough for to have like more than enough in the next year or should we just do it a little, little bit by little bit when we need some? So that that's an active decision as well. So yeah, I, I don't have the answer to it, but yeah, that's something that should be discussed. And you can go ahead, Bowie. I would say a little by a little. I mean, there's if we remove it all at once for everything we need in a year, like it's just gonna sit there. There's no reason for it not to be used, generating fees, generating sushi, yada yada yada, right? But for for staking sushi, you mean? No, he means no, like ho holding like, the LP. So I would agree with you, yeah. but uh, there would also be impermanent loss. So, I mean, I think a year would be way too long. But if we say like, yeah, we remove every three months, like for that amount of runway or six months or uh, one month, whatever. But yeah. Uh, you can go ahead, AK. I, I do not think like, depending on our income from sushi is that wide for us. I think we should focus more on other avenues uh, yes that's that's a benefit but focusing on trying to sort of you know um making the treasury grow or funding our sort of projects through sushi weight earning is is that important? it's it's terrible it's not even yeah. a question of important it's terrible yeah. we would rely on them that it, it yeah. makes no sense but yeah i think this is more of a short-term discussion because right now we okay. have no revenue so we're only projecting, but there's like, we actually have no data to project on, but yeah, okay. but yeah, the, I, I agree with you. A follow up for that, actually back to the OTC point, I think that needs, I mean, that's, that's pretty big one. So definitely we should sort of put a blog post for it or have more details about that. And maybe, um, yeah, the whole proposal thing for getting more people on board through OTC would be, uh, be a good deal for us. I think even marketing wise. Yeah, um, I'll just jump in here quickly and just say that uh, like I was talking to Finesse Boy a little bit about this uh, the other day. My main concern is I don't want us to get caught up uh, like getting too obsessed with treasury management early on because it is more of a detail and it can become like a, a point of contention. Uh, so like I, I prefer if we just kind of like make treasury decisions on like a, a need to make basis for now 
um, just for like the next month or so maybe. Um, maybe we can also think about getting somebody who's kind of in charge of this um, so we can like proxy decisions through them. Yeah, so that's something that I've, I've really wanted to push for. I mean, we, no one has said they're interested in this, so it's, it's easier said than done. But yeah, having someone that knows a lot about data and math and can manage the treasury effectively and you can just relay a little bit of trust towards them. I mean, obviously they can make decisions on their own, but at least you know that, hey, this guy knows everything about what we're doing and what we should do, so we probably should listen to them. And then you check if they're a bad actor. If they're not, then there's no reason not to listen. And yeah, and have someone that holds a position just to manage treasury. Oh, another thing I wanted to say is, uh, I think I agree with Alex that we want to get the train running.